Hello everybody. Today we're gonna talk about mind games. Pay attention to the collapsing stairs. Look why I'm not going behind the host. So that he can panic roll and fall to his death. An invasion isn't a fair fight. Almost always you're fighting against the odds. You should never give your opponents a chance for a fair fight. I don't want the party to come in here and fight me in this corridor. Not because it's a narrow corridor or because I'm gonna get swarmed, but because there isn't any environmental hazard in here. So I chase them out there. See? Never a fair fight. If you think it's cheap of me to fight someone near a cliff or s from some place where they can drop down... Yeah, you're right! It's cheap! I'm an invader! I'm not here to have a duel or get ganked uh, by you and your phantom and get caught in a stun lock. Like it happens here. These kind of invasions bore me. Uh, I don't enjoy fighting so much as I enjoy ambushes and surprises. And in ambushes is where the mind games come and play. When I'm invading, I'm never taking off the obscuring ring before the fight starts. It's very important for me to see the party before they see me. Here I'm gonna showcase some quick decisions that help me win this invasion. Here I notice the host being in his inventory from the animation and I grab my chance for a backstab. Just to fight here because if I let the party go beyond this choke point, then we would have to fight up in the graves where the giant could shoot arrows on me. See, obscure me, always on. Here I see the Sambro going for a spell, I go for that booty. The host is preoccupied with that mob, so I keep pressuring the Sambro. Bunny crawls, his tears pop, and I roll into him. I always wear gauntlets of thorns. Now for the host. I know he's gonna run back, so I hit him, and if you noticed, I pushed him off the cliff. Not by attacking him, but by making him roll. So, as soon as I hit him, I know he'll panic roll to that direction. I go in front of him so that he will lock onto me, but he still keeps that direction. He has queued in the roll to that direction. So, he falls down. Again, I put the obscuring ring on as soon as I invade. I run past the party, hoping that they haven't seen me. And I wait to ambush them uh, later in the level. Uh, there was no point in fighting there. There was uh, no point in, uh, in fighting there because I had no enemies to help me. And uh, I didn't want the party to see me going in that direction because uh, going that direction to, uh, to ambush them because then they wouldn't come in, they wouldn't fight me. That's why the obscuring ring helps. So I decide to camp out here. And we wait. And wait. And we wait. 
and a couple of minutes later here they come still there's no point in attacking them here I choose to fight them at the balcony down below I let them pass me and as soon as uh, they are engaged with the mobs I go in The talismans are there only to cause tr panic uh, and passivity. I, it's, uh, it's not to kill somebody as fast as this, but <laughs> look at that blender. Uh, the the passivity <laughs> didn't work. They don't care about the, the talisman because they're not hurt. Anyway, I I have to make them. I have to engage them, I have to make them come to me. But uh, they have spells, they have uh, sorceries, they have pyromancies. Uh, there's, there's no point for them to come in here. So I decide to take the fight back to them. But uh, as, uh, as, as soon as I see the hollow going there, I try to flank them. Again, it doesn't work. And I'm getting pushed back. But, invasions are all about quick decisions, and when you have a chance to kill someone, just grab it. Now, two phantoms dead in a couple of seconds, and me against a very aggressive host. But. Now, he can't run so easy back to the bonfire and resummon because I chose to fight him here instead of uh, where I spawned in. So now I have the upper hand. And we're done. So that was quick decisions and uh, some tactics that you can use when uh, you invade someone and you want to do some ambushes. Now we're gonna see an invasion where I make uh, some quick decisions uh, based on what I see. How you, can, uh, how you can affect the outcome of an invasion by not doing anything. Here I jumped down, but I didn't attack, I didn't do a planting attack. Why? Because I saw that the other invader's tears popped in as soon as I started falling. So if I did a plunging attack, I would surely have killed him. And because I'm wearing the Gauntlets of Thorns, I don't roll because now he has only one hit point and I don't want to kill him. He's rolling and I'm not rolling. And we're chasing down the Phantom. Now, uh, if you watched my last video about staying out of each other's way, I try to do the same thing here. And the phantom panic rolls into this room with uh, that uh, abomination, and I don't go in there. There's no reason for me to go in there. I'm just waiting for an opening, and there she goes. And now the frustrating part. Uh, I really hate stun lock weapons. When you get caught in free scythe, uh, there's nothing you can do but panic roll, or if you know the timing, sparry. Here we flank the party. One invader from one side, me from the other. Now I see the summon going for the weapon art, so I go for the stone. Again, we separate the party and we're fighting each other. Me, the lucky, the lucky phantom, and the other invader, the host. And again, I take so much damage from the lag and from the lucky phantom and from the host that I panic roll away. And now it's all about uh, chasing the host down.
this invasion, I spawned in as soon as the party was coming up the stairs, so I had lost the element of surprise. But uh, I still had this choke point. Thanks to the Gondol of Thorns, I killed the first Phantom, and then I'm against the host and an overlevel dude. I see him swinging a big ass weapon, I go for the backstab, and I roll away because I fear that the host will come back. But I don't get too greedy because I don't want to get uh, caught in a stun lock. Here the host decides to do a jumping attack, I go for the backstab, I don't get it, I don't master one because I know the other phantom is behind me and I rolled away, uh, if I didn't roll I would have killed caught. So I go back to my choke point, there's no reason to fight them in there where they can flank me. Some teasing and uh, harassment later, uh, a second invader spawns in. And now it's uh, my chances seem to get better. See what happens when you get in a stun lock by two ultra great swords. That's why I only I only attack once and then roll away. Uh, like uh, a lot of invaders do actually. After my Estus flasks uh, all finished, I I just stayed back and let uh, the other invader do his job and went in for backstabs or for some cheap damage. But uh, unfortunately, I get uh, hit by the other invader and I have no other flasks. But I've counted the flasks that the party has used and they're down on their flasks, so I decide to use a Divine Blessing. Because I know we can win. Now, I count that the invader hit four times and I know he's gonna go back, so I use the Stomp Weapon Art. Because the Great Club can only hit uh, four or five times if you have high enough stamina and I knew that he was gonna roll away after uh, at, after four attacks and again it's just a matter of chasing the host down Here is why I always wear the obscuring ring when I'm invading. I see that there's a party of two and uh, I don't show myself because if I show myself then we're gonna have a bonfire gank and there's no point in that. Uh, as soon as I see them going from uh, that staircase, I knew that they were going that they were going for the for the Lothric Knight with the Great Lance. But uh, this is uh, a, a, a soul level 125, so the that knight can be taken down by them in a matter of seconds. So there's no point in me going to fight them there. But uh, in this. Uh, in this map of the map, in this uh, part of the map, sorry, uh, the Holos here have uh, undead hundred charms, and they're they're actually pretty good uh, with their damage. So I decide to do an ambush here. I go in for a backstab, but uh, the game doesn't want to give it to me and I get mixed up in the blender. I try not to panic and go back and heal and fight them one by one. 
bad again. I get caught up in a straight shot blender again. So I try to attack when, only when I can do some damage and only then. But the Phantom goes back, leaves the host alone with me and the Hollow. And uh, they're hit by their dead hunter charm, so there's nothing they can do now but uh, run away. They can't heal, so the fire firebomb does the job. And we can hear uh, the Phantom's autistic screeching from here. So that's generally how I invade. I I kite the party first. I look what th at what they're using, at uh, what their skill level is, and then I attack them. Here again, uh, we both get uh, flat-footed because I didn't know where they were, and I saw them as soon as I was coming out of that corridor. And I see that we have one pyromancer and one guy with the meme swords. So there was no point in fighting them in there. I could. Uh, I would only get uh, flanked there and killed in a moment. So I go back to the narrow corridors and uh, I switch to a weapon that has uh, a vertical moveset and uh, some uh, hyper armor. So I go for the Black Knight Ultra Greatsword. Here they believe I'm retreating uh, to save myself, but uh, I'm not. I'm actually retreating uh, for the hole. The, there's a hole behind this uh, crystal lizard here, and this is the moment they lost this invasion. So, uh, that's how I invade, that's how I do ambushes, and how my mind games work. Hope you learned something, and catch you guys later.